Welcome to V101 TV. I am Tim Smith at tsmith underscore co on Twitter. And today we're going to talk about installing Nutanix Community Edition in the home lab. Now, Nutanix is one of the major HCI vendors in the industry, and they have their own hypervisor, the Acropolis Hypervisor, or AHV. So today we're going to deploy that into our home lab so later we can test some other things like Veeam's Acropolis Hypervisor support for backups. But first things first, head over to Nutanix.com slash product slash community edition, and we're going to go ahead and download the community edition. Now, when you get this, what you'll notice is, is that you actually will be downloading this file, ce2018.0131stable.image.gz. That's not what we need to deploy. What we actually need is to get this into VMDK format because I'm actually going to be deploying Nutanix CE into a virtual machine running on top of VMware because my home lab just happens to run VMware. Now you can certainly deploy this to a bare metal server and run all of your VMs on AHV without using VMware or Hyper-V. So the first thing we're going to do is get that file downloaded. And once we do, you'll see that we have this .img.gz file. So let's go ahead and unzip that. And I've got 7-zip here. And we'll just drag and drop that here in that same location to unzip it. And we'll speed this along. OK, so now we've got our image file. However. Since we're going into VMware, that's not what we need here. So we're going to go ahead and rename this to ce-flat.vmdk because we're going to want a VMDK file to upload up into ESXi. Now, one thing that we're missing here is a data descriptor file, right? So VMDKs have the flat file and the descriptor file. So what we need to do is go ahead and create a file called ce.vmdk, and this is the information that we're going to put in it. Now, I'll put this in the description so it's easier for you to copy and paste. But essentially, we're referencing that CE flat file and giving it the extents and kind of some geometry of that disk. So we'll go ahead and create that file and uh, copy it over here into our directory. So once we have the two VMDK files, the next thing that we need to do is get that uploaded into VMware. So I'm logged here into my vCenter server in one of my data stores, and I've created a folder. So let's go ahead and choose to upload those two files. And again, we'll speed this along. OK, now that our files are uploaded, let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine. So I've already got one running here, but let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine. And we're just going to call this, uh, let's call it AHV. And we're going to stick it in our cluster. Choose a data store, compatibility with 6, 7, and above. And I'm going to choose other and other 64-bit for the operating system type, and just call it AHV. So first things first, for CPU, uh, that can be on one socket, that's fine. But we do need to make sure that we choose hardware virtualization here. Since we're going to be running virtual machines inside this virtual machine, we need to be able to allow the uh, hardware virtualization to pass on through. Now 16 gig uh, minimum, I'm going to go ahead and just go 48 gig of RAM here. Let's get rid of this hard drive because we're going to do an existing hard disk. We're going to point that to that AHV file, this uh, CE file that we uploaded, right? So here's my CE.VMDK that we just uploaded. That is going to be my disk number one. Now we're going to add another hard disk, a new drive. This one is a minimum of 250 gig. And this needs to be on SSD storage. So I'm going to go ahead and select to store this on one of my SSD data stores. And I'm going to thin provision because I don't need to take up all that space right now. And then one more hard disk. This one is going to be 500 gig minimum. And this one is going to be stored uh, with my virtual machine on the hybrid array. So again, our, our CE.VMDK disk as disk number one. Disk two will be our SSD. And disk three will be our capacity drive, minimum 250 and minimum 500 gig. And let's go ahead and attach this to our lab network. So we only need one NIC for now running this in the lab. And let's go ahead and finish this. 
All right, so let's go ahead and power on this virtual machine and open up the console. And I was having a little bit of issues before with the main boot option here, so I went ahead and just chose the rescue boot option. Uh, really won't make a difference for deploying CE in our lab. Okay, so typically we would start now with install if we were doing this on physical equipment. But there's a couple of things that we'll need to change before we install since we're running this as a v uh, virtual machine inside of VMware. So let's go ahead and log in as root and our password Nutanix forward slash for you. And we're going to make a couple changes here. So the first one is, is let's go ahead and change directory to var cache libvirt QEMU capabilities. And if we do a ls here, you'll see that we have a single XML file. So we need to make a change in this XML file. And I'm going to use nano. And we're going to page down all the way to the bottom. So what we need to do is find this entry right here that has PCI 440FX Red Hat Linux 720 and we're going to go ahead and delete that entry. And then we're going to come up here to the first machine name entry which has Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.3 and we're going to change that to 7.2. And let's go ahead and write our file, our changes out and go ahead and exit. So one more file to edit after this. So let's go ahead and go to slash home slash install slash phx underscore iso slash phoenix slash svm underscore template slash kvm and here we're going to edit the default.xml and right here under features we want to add one additional line and what we're going to add here is pmu state equal to off and we can go ahead and write this out as well and exit so now that we've gotten our two files edited let's go ahead and reboot this virtual machine all right, so let's go ahead now and go back into that rescue mode uh, just because my initial method doesn't boot for some reason uh, using that first boot prompt. Since we made the edits to the files a little bit ago, uh, now we're ready to proceed with the install. So let's just go ahead and follow along with the prompts here. We'll type in install and we're going to choose uh, US because that's where I'm at. All right, at this point, Nutanix is gonna to wanna to test your virtual disks. Uh, if this were a physical machine, obviously these would be your physical disks, but it's just gonna make sure that they're at an acceptable performance rate. So let's go ahead and proceed with that. And we're gonna have a slight delay here as we're testing. Okay, so both of our disks have made that acceptable performance level. So now let's go ahead and set up IP addresses for our host and for our CVM. So I'll just go ahead and choose an available IP in my lab here, assign the gateway address to for it, and then an IP address for that CVM. It's going to be on the same network in my lab with that same gateway. And I am creating a single node cluster. So you can deploy multiple VMs in your lab but in my case, I'm just going to deploy one. I don't need to create a multi-node cluster. So let's go ahead and read through the entire EULA. Uh, it will not let you proceed until you've paged down all the way through. And we'll accept, and let's get started. Okay, once it's finished installing, let's go ahead and open up your browser, point it to the IP address that we set for that CVM, and we're gonna go ahead and log in with the default admin and Nutanix forward slash for you. 
Now it's going to go ahead and prompt us to change our password. So let's go ahead and create a new password. And once we get this password set, we're going to go back to the login screen here. Log, log in with our newly set credentials. Okay, and last, we're just going to go ahead and enter in our next credentials, and I'll go ahead and plug those in now. And let's go ahead and log in. All right, so it, it established our connectivity to the next community, and now you can see we are at the Prism interface. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and deploy some virtual machines and also deploy the Veeam appliance. If you found the video helpful, be sure to click like and also click subscribe to be informed of the next video that comes out in the series.